Hey groups, uh, it is good to see you guys again. Uh, before we get into the recap and groups questions, I want to ask you, how did last week go? We laid out the challenge with the hour of silence. How did that go for you guys? Talk about that in your group and then we'll jump right into our group's content. All right, we are continuing in our series on sticks and stones, tying in the book of Proverbs and James and what the power of our words have. Um, specifically this week, Eric spoke on the power of our words. And when we think about power, um, we think about big things that are happening, right? Eric brought a horse on the stage. Shocking. I'm shocked he didn't get bitten or nibbled on by the horse. But uh, the horse, horse was on stage and we had this illustration of a bridle or a bit that you put in the horse's mouth. Um, and you can actually turn that 1,300 pound animal with something small in their mouth and you can turn them in any direction that you want it to go. Um, it is not very often that we think powerful things um, are so small sometimes. Um, so when we look at our lives, when we think about the things that have power in our lives, our words, right? Our tongues are tiny little things, but can create so much power. Um, we're going to be continuing that uh, kind of dialogue this week as we look at our group's questions. So Kids, um, if you are in the room, um, there are some kids questions at the bottom of the sheet that your group's leaders should have. Um, and I do want to remind you, if you are here on a Sunday morning or over the weekend, we are going to start printing those uh, sheets out. So if you want to be prepared more for group's questions, grab one of those on your way out and we'll, we'd love to uh, get you guys into those. So kids, on the bottom of that sheet, uh, I'm going to have your group's leaders walk you through the kids' questions right now. Um, and then adults, we're going to jump right into your content. All right, adults, first question for you guys. What image comes to your mind when you hear the word power? Um, we talked this weekend about different images. What comes to your mind when you hear the word power? Question number two, and start by reading Proverbs 15 verse one. In your opinion, what makes up a gentle answer? How does one answer gently? And are there specific words that someone would use if they are trying to answer in a gentle way? Question number three. In what ways could you use this gentle answer in the way you talk to people this week? Who comes to mind when you think about doing that? Um, let's be honest, when we think about giving a gentle answer, there's probably someone that pops into our head that maybe we haven't been giving gentle answers to. Um, who comes to mind and what would that conversation look like? Question number four, on a scale from one to 10, 10 being all the time, how often do you respond to a situation immediately without even thinking, right? Uh, what are some of the ways we respond immediately to a situation without even thinking? Think about your interactions at work or with family. Do you respond quicker or slower depending on different people around you? Talk about what those interactions and that speed of response, what, what does that typically look like for you? Read Proverbs 15, verse 28. Um, and then I want to talk about a few life examples and maybe put yourself in these, in these situations. Let's say you get an email from your child's teacher that says they have not been participating well in class. 
what would an immediate response look like for that? What would a pondering response look like for that? Second situation, you walk in the house tired after a long day and your spouse immediately tells you that they messed up on the budget and you have an extra 500 in bills, not 500 in access, 500 in bills, that's not the right way. What does an immediate response look like and what does a pondering response look like? Third example, um, your roommate is supposed to do the dishes and you are in charge of vacuuming, dusting, and cleaning the bathroom, which you always do on time, right? You are very precise on that. You walk in after class and see they haven't been done for three days. What does an immediate response look like and what does a pondering response look like? And number six, uh, question number six is actually our challenge for this week. Um, go back to picturing the horse, this monstrous animal. Um, the challenge for this week is a 10 lap cool down. So if something comes up during the week where you want to respond immediately, but you know that that response isn't actually probably very healthy for anybody, Picture taking that horse, um, Xander's, picture taking Xander's the horse and walking it around an imaginary uh, lap, a track, 10 times. I don't know how long it takes you. Maybe your track is smaller than mine, maybe it's bigger. Just imagine yourself walking this horse around this track 10 times to allow yourself to cool down and maybe think a little bit about or, or ponder what a response should actually look like. So. This week, when you have moments that you want to respond immediately, take Xander's, take them around a few times, um, and make sure you put that into your life this week. Groups. If you have time and want to dive deeper into the Word of God, I strongly recommend heading into Mark 4, verse 35 through 41. It tells a story about Jesus um, in the midst of a storm. Um, and I think the way he reacts and how the disciples react um, are pretty interesting. Uh, so take a look at that if you have time. Otherwise, groups, we will see you next week. I hope you guys all have a great week.